Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. We have Charlie Freak with us today and Pastor Henry Hildebrandt. Yes, hello. Welcome to the podcast. I've had you both on the show before, so it's such a pleasure to have you both back. Um, pastor Henry Hildebrandt is a pastor in Ilmer, Ontario, who has been passionately fighting for the rights and freedoms of Canadians with to supporting the Constitution and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And he has been on the front line practically every day doing this. So we thank you so much for that, uh, Pastor Hildebrandt. It's just been a great example for everybody. Yes, <laughs> for everyone. Charlie Freak. <laughs> Charlie Freak, uh, just amazing esoteric knowledge that Charlie carries about our divinity, uh, lost texts, gospels, all this kind of stuff, which is so interesting. Um, and he also has so much insight into the peace movement and what's going on in the political field as well. So welcome back, Charlie. Uh, such a pleasure and honor to be here, Elle. Um, we, we have developed a, a really wonderful bond and yes. um, every time that we do these shows together, they're very, they're very precious, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you for that, Charlie, so much and as to well. Be here, and to be here with Pastor Henry is a great honor. We were saying just before the show that uh, I've been uh, aware of, of Henry's uh, work throughout all of this, and, and when, I had, when I had any kind of social media, <laughs> I was posting um, the things that Henry was doing all of the time, but I, I don't have any social media. <laughs> they you took know, everything. So. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Charlie has been watching some of the things that you've been doing, uh, Pastor Hildebrand. Charlie, however, in, in not too recently, actually, for a while now, has lost all his social media platforms Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. <laughs> So, um, so Charlie, you can let people know at the end where they can find you uh, so that people can connect with you because I do think you might be on shoot and tab. Is that correct? We um, our, um, our uh, really wonderful friend, Tony Wheel, Tony created uh, a Rumble account okay. for us and uh, she's been putting up, I think we're up to about 100 of our 250 um, uh, Freak Sense uh, videos uh, up on Rumble wow. now. Wow. So, and we just run a little, a little, a little chant or a little page on MeWe. Uh, right. And just, just to be able to, yeah, give people an access and that's it. So okay. uh, it, it's very nice because um, I really don't have any interest in connecting to any of these demonic um, social media platforms at all. Uh, what, what Colleen and I are really looking forward to um, in the coming months is a complete transformation from, from demonic entities and agencies to righteous uh, agencies. And that's all we want to, to deal with and be part of. We don't want to, to do deals with Facebook and, and, mm -hmm. and these institutions are pure evil. They, they are true. the face of evil on, yes. on this earth and we want nothing to do with them. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Um, so let's just let's just piggyback on that. Um, we will go into that a little bit more. Um, I just wanted to see if we'll start with you, Pastor Hildebrand. I'll ask you guys a few questions, maybe 10 minutes each for an answer, uh, so we can keep it going between the two of you. Um, Pastor Hildebrand, can you keep us, can you get us up to speed on what's been happening in Canada that suggests that there's a tyrannical agenda? happening here so uh you know this all started last last spring we're now a year into it it's hard hard to believe uh, of course at first they told us talking about two weeks flatten the curve or whatever but that was empty words we found that out very soon uh since then we've been fighting and uh, uh, battling with this whole thing uh looking back now it's hard to believe that at one time we were having a drive-in service with our windows closed and the police were there videotaping the whole thing right on the yard there, uh, videotaping everybody's license plate and whatnot. Meanwhile, we were the safest parking lot in town. Anyway, as you know, it went on from there. Mm -hmm. um, what's extremely, extremely troubling right now is that uh, I was telling some folks, I said, when we hear that communist Cuba has the churches open and Canada is jailing their pastors, uh, something has gone very, 
very wrong, and that's put that's put mildly. Um, of course, as we speak here, right shortly here, we will hear what's happening to Pastor Coates in Edmonton, him being in prison there, see if he can be uh, temporary. I, I believe it's uh, uh, he's supposed to be released on bail or whatever, but he's not signing anything, and we're totally supporting him with that. He shouldn't be signing anything. What's there to to sign? Because he's he's doing his job, and if we are if we are a Christian country, which at this point it doesn't look like it, then uh, I don't know what will be happening with him because his court hearing is set for May third, fourth, and fifth, three days there. But they are they are deciding today if he will be staying in prison from now until then. And if that is not uh, tyrannical, then I don't know what, what tyranny would be. And it seems like we can't do anything but stand up to that. Um, it's not about me keeping peace in a little town of Elmer and trying to be friends with everybody. I've done that for 30 years. Uh, I didn't just come to this town here. So um, what what is wrong? What is wrong with us being at the place where it's our own property? We're doing what the Bible teaches us to do. We're having a peaceful uh, service there. But of course, their argument is that you don't realize that we're in a pandemic. And to be quite frank with you, no, I don't realize that we're in a pandemic because no one has come up with any data that proves that. So until there is data to prove that, uh, I cannot jump back and forth with the government. One time it's 10% in the building, then it's 30, and then it's back. And then we're in the gray, and then we're in the, in the red, and then we're in the orange. Um, really, right now, right now we should be in the green. If nothing is happening, why are we not in the green? You know. So, but anyway, you know, you know how that goes. That's very, very, very troubling. Very troubling for us, and we are we are determined that we are not we're not backing down from this because we have a higher authority than than the authority of the government that we are listening to. And I understand that that is a sticking point for them. Exactly, that's the point: is that they realize that we believe that there's a higher authority that decides these things. Uh, I believe that the government has stepped out of their lane. I don't, I don't think that they're in their, in their jurisdiction to do what they're doing. And I would be thrilled to see all the churches rise up, stand up and say, here we are. Uh, and then uh, not much they could be doing about that. But at this point, this is where we are. Wow. Yes, absolutely. And we also see examples of police officers not abiding by the oath they've taken and exactly. medical practitioners also who are going against their training their medical training and i don't say that lightly i actually have spoken with a couple of doctors in person who admitted in confidence that they have been told to treat certain conditions around covid in contrast to how they've been trained to so, yeah, something is really, as you say, Pastor Hildebrand, something is really off when that's happening. That's and right. there hasn't been consistent data. There hasn't been any conclusive evidence or anything to show that this is a pandemic or that this virus, um, you know, even exists. Not to say that it doesn't exist, but it has not been clear to mm -hmm. us that it actually exists. And it's been very nefarious and deceptive and tricky um, and so much mind control has gone into preparing people to think that this is our new reality. Right, so, exactly. And then to say that we are presently with the lockdown curing it, the cure has been many, many, many times worse than the problem itself. We look at, I mean, you take anything, take suicide rates or take a drug overdose or domestic violence, take any of those. And we have created a problem we haven't helped a problem. We have created a problem, and not just nation in this nation, but worldwide. Yes, yes, worldwide, absolutely. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna call on you in a minute, Charlie. But and Charlie, I'll get your take on this. But isn't this the Jesuits? Isn't this the Jesuits all over again? I mean, we've had, um, and I'm talking about the black folk, the, the dark Jesuits. Um, they have infiltrated the world many, many times and have been, you know, picked out of, of different nations and even, you know, not existed for about a 42 year period. And when they came back on the scene, that it was their oath. Their oath was definitely to annihilate any nation that had a free government 
or allowed the people to be the voice of the government. And this to me is no different how they've hidden themselves behind corporations and they're kind of in the dark, in the background, in the secret. And um, the same, they're using the same tactics of inverting everything and keeping themselves so that they're not seen and using front corporations to infiltrate all of our different systems. And they know that if a free government comes back into place where it's we the people who are in charge, they're going to be gone. So Charlie, I just wonder what you think about that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I will speak to that. And uh, thank you, Henry, again, <clears throat> for all that you're doing, uh, for all that you just um, brought everyone up to speed with and, um, and for, I think, being really, really, really fair in, in how you're explaining what's going on because, because I think you could have been a lot, a lot, a lot more direct in the yes. thing you'd like to say, but what you said was very fair. And, and it outlines um, the heart and soul of, of what's, what's going on. And what's going on is, is a secretive plan to, to literally take away the one, the one thing that truly exists, which is God, our, our, our Father, our Creator. And so everything that, that um, and this is why the Bible is such a master document, no matter what they ever attempted to, to do to it. I, I know a lot of people seem to feel or think that the Bible has been, <clears throat> has been um, um, hacked apart. There are certainly things that are missing from the pages of the New Testament, likely the Old Testament as well, for sure. But in terms of, of, of um, uh, trying to change the wording around and trying to do things like that with the Bible, they can't because mm -hmm. the creation of of this this holy text is such that that it's beyond them and I, I want everyone to really think about this for a sec god is light and god is is love god mm -hmm. is truth god is creation and therefore whatever creation is is god and that is the truth these people are anti-creation mm -hmm. they are for abortion this this is this is sickening and it's commonsensical sickening beyond description if you just commonsensically consider and not let somebody else tell you how you're supposed to feel about it. it. It makes no sense whatsoever. So what they are is the antithesis of what God is. So God is creation, which mm -hmm. is love, which is light, which is the truth. All that the truth is, is, is God's creation, which would then be the mother. The mother, which is this... this um, a feminine plane of the physical that we exist within whatever she does is the truth because she is she is of the father and and then we are the children <laughs> and so um what we are in our heart and soul is the truth we're love and we're light but we're the truth because we're god's creation and so everything they do is smoke and mirror everything they do is a mm -hmm. lot everything and that's that's how we started our channel three years ago the very first shows that we did a seven-part series was everything that organized society has taught you is a lie now would you like to hear some truth and the truth comes from the bible it comes through through the 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 actions and and the teachings of jesus christ and and you just go back to 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 root to square to as Nikola Tesla would say, to zero point. And if you go back to zero point, that's creation, which is God. And out of creation, mm -hmm. the mother, the child, and then, and then we have this perfect, perfect creation. So it's so simple because the truth is, it is obfuscated, but it can't, can't be taken away from us because it's, it's in the Bible, it's in the night sky, it's within our physiology, everything about us. That if you just know thyself, that's why Jesus and so many of the apostles um, talked about this again and again and again within the Bible. Know thyself. The riches of this world uh, reside within the man or woman that truly know themselves. Because what you are is a master creation from the master creator. Mm -hmm. Are all miracles. And we can do miracles within us. So when so when you just get to that level then the first miracle is our immune system <laughs> funny how that works right 
I know where this is going. <laughs> we're in the womb and everything is just heaven on earth. It's beautiful. And I'm out of the womb that organized society says is that victim, we need to pay you to protect you. And there's no goodness in, in any of this. There's no common sense no. In, in, any no. of, in any of that. It is, right. is non-common sense. It, it is insanity. So yeah. God created us, created us with an immune system that makes us impervious. And so I think, like I said, I think Colleen and I were the first ones. When the COVID thing first came out, I wrote an article on Facebook. And then we got, that was the first time we got shut down on Facebook. So it's about a year ago now. And I explain what a virus is. And what a virus is, is a, is a secretion that is created inside of you from, from the sainted claustrum, which, you know, is right next to the, <laughs> to the holy seat, to the, to the sacred seat of, of God, um, the mercy seat um, w- within, within our, our head, you know. Um, it, it's all just a miracle. And so from the claustrum, we are produced these viruses. And what the viruses do, what they, what they are, is they detect foreign invaders, <laughs> kind of like what's happening. Canada has been taken over by, by a hidden group of people that are not Canadians and do not have the interests of Canada or Canadians in, in their hearts because they do not have the interests of God or, or, or Jesus Christ in their hearts. That's what's happened. And so, so we're supposed to rise up and be the virus to protect Mother Canada, but only a few answer the call. Many are, many are, many are called, but few are chosen because few choose to hear the call and few choose to get up off their, their fannies and do something uh, about the call uh, that they clearly hear, 1111. Everywhere, everywhere you look now, everyone is seeing, and Charlie, please help me, 1111, 11, Solomon's temple, the twin temples. And God is calling you to stand up and, and to do what's right, to do what's righteous. Enough of this. So a virus is simply that. It, it, it is a, a secretion unto you. It does not come from a bat. It does not come from China. It does not come from a bat. It comes from you. And it doesn't work in somebody else. It only works in you. So it, it can't be spread virally through the air because it's, it's something that is uniquely unto you. And what, what does a virus do? Very simple. A virus detects foreign invaders. It disguises itself as, very clever, but then that's the genius of God. A virus disguises itself as the foreign antibody. So it observes it, become the observer, become the lighthouse, become the observer. And they, they then um, emulate the, uh, the virus, what this foreign invader is. And then the foreign invader mingles with it. And then the virus quickly takes it to the border and says, out you go. So, so we're building a wall. <laughs> we're, we're building a wall to keep these, these foreign adversaries out of, out, of our, out of our country, these demonic agencies out of our country. That's what a virus is. That's what a vi- virus does. It rounds up foreign invaders and shows them to the border. It exits them out of our system. And yet they've got everybody, pretty much 90, 95, 99% of the world in terror of beautiful, simple, uh, empowering, magical creation of God within us, which is known as a virus. And they have you t- terrified that somebody's going to sneeze their nose and you're going to catch the virus that has nothing to do with the truth. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to start with in a nutshell, is that everything that we believe in from them and everything they've been teaching us is a lie. The truth is in observe the mother, the truth, revive God. That is the truth. Observe the actions and words of Jesus Christ for yourself. Read them for yourself. Fall in love with that man. Fall in love with his actions. Fall in love with those words and be that. Don't sign a card to an agency and and pay them 10% of your wealth, which is a get out of jail free card, and then just continue to be a sinner the rest of your life. That's not what Jesus said. That's not what Jesus wants. Jesus did these things to show you the way. That's what Jesus said. I am the light and I am the way. And nobody gets to the Father but through me because he's the way. And the way is 
the what is what I call alkalinity and the alkaline man, which is a, which is a man of righteousness, of goodness, and and so when you are a goodly, godly mankind, then you have become you 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 are you're walking into the teachings and um, and the works of Jesus Christ. So you're becoming a true child, a true son of man. You're tr becoming a true child of God by just being virtuous, by just being righteous, by just being kind to, to everyone. Put kindness first in your heart and we can't go wrong. And that's what you see with this system is unkind, mm -hmm. unsympathetic, no common sense, mm -hmm. no love, no compassion. There's mm -hmm. no truth in anything they do. Just this lies, and then their lies, as L brought up, and I'll leave it with this, is this. Their lies are backed up, not with the military. The military, if you notice, everyone, please notice our goodly godly military who, who swear um, Semper Fidelis, which is always, um, always faithful, always uh, in fidelity to God, God first. Our military, they haven't been been doing anything against us. It's the police forces, and the police forces are all headed by Freemasons, and the Freemasons are now owned by the Jesuits, and so every police force in every organized country in the world is being run by these demonic Jesuits, and this is what these police, and they know they need to do better, they know what they're doing is not right, but they need a paycheck, they're just following orders, it's not my fault, you know, isn't that how World War II started, you know, isn't that what World War One? is, isn't that, isn't that sort of what's happened in the 20th century we're just falling orders not mm -hmm. good enough my friends not good enough mm -hmm. no no i showed us the way and that's the way it yeah. is and that's the way it has everybody just try i'd love to try if everybody just try to be christ like any problems in this world not one not a one Harley, I love that. Wow, that was so interesting, actually, the way you describe the virus externally and internally. I love that. <laughs> I love that virus there and the virus here. Yeah, excellent. Um, and, and just, you know, so many words of wisdom in there. Um, rather than ask you the second question, I'm going to actually pull from what you just said and ask, um, uh, Pastor Hildebrandt, maybe why you think, Pastor Hildebrandt, that some people aren't stepping up to the call, I guess, as Charlie said. Some people hear the call, they're responding. But what's happening with the people who aren't hearing the call? Any, any thoughts on that? So I think there would be a, a couple of answers to that, in my opinion, and, and Charlie would, could probably come up with a lot more. Um, the thing is, it seems to me that so if I speak just for Canada for a moment, it seems to me that we are a very, very complacent nation, have become very complacent that we think everything happens on its own, that we nobody has to stand up for something. Second World War ended, so now we're on cruise, we're an automatic, uh, the government has our best interest in mind. Uh, they'll take care of it. They'll make sure that our that our freedoms, God-given freedoms, are uh, are since they're enshrined in the charter, they will always be there. That could be that could. It seems to me like that's one answer. The other answer is that it seems to me that many people uh, are not. What should I say? They they are not re realizing the value, the value of the God-given freedom, or it doesn't mean a lot to them. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I would say it includes pastors, that they are not realizing the value of, of what it means for us together as, as the people of God. They don't recognize the importance of it. And therefore, according to the Bible, they aren't real pastors because why are they fleeing when the wolf comes? Why are they running? Uh, and if we would have stood up from the first moment on, it would have never come to this that the pastors are sitting in jail because they would, they would have to fight thousands of churches, but now they're fighting a handful. Thankfully, more and more are waking up. But I'm, I'm saying, um, is, is there not a value in it? Uh, and if the, if the government doesn't recognize it, I recognize it. And if they don't want to stand up for it, I will, uh, whether they like it or not. Because this is, God is so much higher than the government. Long before there was government, there was God 
long before there was government, there was a church or God had ordained these things into existence. He is like, like Charlie said, they were created. He's the creation. So why would the creature, why do these creatures now stand up and speak against the creator and say, no, uh, these our fellow creatures don't have this freedom. They can't do this. And that's what really upsets me or that's what really ignites my passion in me is I will do what it takes, whatever it takes. And I'm not talking about being violent. I'm talking about passionately standing up for what the Bible teaches and for what God has created. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, Pastor Hildebrandt. Well, yes, <laughs> well said for sure. Um, it it does, is quite unnerving to see how people are so willingly, or well, maybe not valuing, maybe they wouldn't put it that way themselves, but what not really taking into account what it means to lose freedom. Um, what what we what that would look like for us we already you know we're already seeing what that looks like more and more and more each day here in Canada that's for sure and, and I think they I think they need to realize that it's not just about uh, freedom for the churches I've said all along I said it's not about me it's not or it's not just about me it's about me too I'm included but it's not just about me and our church but it is for the general population the human family worldwide it's for everybody because freedom taken away from one of us, like I've said in the past, is freedom taken away from all of us. So uh, don't, we want, don't we want to stand up for it? I am very shocked, very surprised. This past year, I would say one of my biggest surprises is that people are so, um, so asleep, so deeply, so deeply non-energized uh, or non, uh, non uh, what's the word? They're just not, not on fire about this, you know? Uh, yeah, that, you know, that surprises me too. That's when I really have to get my <laughs> emotional reactivity in check. <laughs> yes. You know, when I walk somewhere and I see a lineup of people outside with masks on and, and just, you know, all of that, whatever you say, I'll do, you know, I'll give you my phone, I'll give you my address, I'll get, you know, it's just, it really is tough to take because although it's these entities that are doing it, it's sure. even harder to watch people doing it than it is the entities doing it to them exactly you don't see that, that flame you don't see that you know that ignited flame and passion for your own human right your god-given rights and that's what i think you know it is a lot is is that there's been so much um let's say so much agenda against god you know, blaming God for things, or if something happened in the church, it would be it would be God's fault. It wouldn't be the system's fault, the church's fault. It would be God's fault. And and there was just it got came to a time I remember in my own life where it's like, are you allowed to talk about God, or is that going to be weird? You know, mm -hmm. and, and and we've swayed so far from that. And the other point that you make about us being totally complacent is. You know, especially this generation, we haven't grown up with a lot of hardships and we haven't grown up with wars and we haven't done a lot of things or had the natural disasters a lot of other countries have had. And, and you know, it, it really is difficult for me personally. And I don't want to, I know that when I bring up this subject, it's going to you know, take us off course, but we certainly don't have to go this way. Uh, and this is no disrespect to anybody. This is no disrespect to anybody's sexuality, anybody's gender when gender your gender or your sexuality is the primary theme in Canada when we have people starving mm -hmm. and we have you know psychological warfare we have we have people losing their businesses and still the front line <laughs> you know news is do we have gender neutrality and can kids change their sex without their parents permission I mean if that isn't if that isn't, you know, a wake up call, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what is. I mean, right. yeah, it's so Charlie, uh, jump in at any point. Uh, you're, you're both doing such an amazing job. And uh, Henry um, really got to the heart of the matter, which is this mm -hmm. this lack of, of value um, mm -hmm. for yes. God and lack of value for the Bible, lack of value for for what jesus christ uh was and is um it, it, it's just it's incredible but what we what we need to do is recognize is that has been a concerted plan by a small group of people mm -hmm. i believe that 
these people trace their bloodlines all the way back. And like I said, I, we're, I think we're one of the first people to talk about who the true um, perpetrators of all of these crimes are, which today people would know as, as the Phoenicians who live in Venice, which is a ship at sea. They won't come upon God's land. They won't because they know they know that would be attempting to take heaven by force. And they tried that already um, with the Tower of Babel, and that didn't work out so well for them. So ever since then, all they've done is they've populated the world with lawyers. And all lawyers do is they look for loopholes. But here's the thing, folks. They're looking for loopholes in God's law. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get around God's law by creating legality. There's no, there's no lawfulness in legality. We, we exist in a system that there's, there's literally um, thousands of, of laws in Canada now. And the basic precept to all of those laws is that your ignorance of all of these laws does not, does not um, sequester you from, from the responsibilities of these laws. You have to know all of that's insanity. That's insanity. You know, God's laws are, are three. And the third one is just restitution. If you make, if you make, an offense upon another, then then you make restitution for it. Nobody needs to go to prison. Nobody needs to be sequestered off. We just need to make right what was wrong. We have to turn the wrong into rights. That's all we have to do. And that's where this ancient system of justice originated out of sheriffs. And that's what sheriffs were. They they went, they were on circuits, like like circuits within the skull or circuits within the body. And they were circuit court judges. And the sheriffs on their horses went on the circuits and they provided fair uh, justice for, for anyone who felt that they were wronged. And the solution was always to make it right. That's what it was. That's, that's all it is. And, you know, we you know, go back to the Sanskrit words, uh, ahimsa and satyagraha. Satya is, is truth, God, godliness, God, truth. And satyagraha is the pursuit of truth as a way of life. And ahimsa is do whatever you want to do, but cause no violence to, to anyone else um, in any fashion. But do whatever you want to do, but cause no violence in any form to anyone. And that's all you need. You, you don't need anything beyond, beyond live your life in pursuit of the truth. Because the pursuit of the truth is the pursuit of the creator. The creator is the truth. Is you create creation. And he has caused no violence any form. And just go do. And, you know, when you begin just to observe that there are trees everywhere that produce food. And they all take their turns. So, so that there's this never-ending supply of, of food. And it's all for free. And then you just begin to look at this. And it's like, geez, yeah. It's like, I wonder why we need money or why there is money in the first place. You know, and get a lot of money stuff from Jesus in the Bible. I didn't get a lot of, you know, and in fact, the prophets in the Old Testament were always these people that were really concerned about the riches of, of the physical realm and not the riches of, of heaven that, that cannot be tarnished and a moth does, does not corrupt and a thief does not steal in the night. Those, those are the riches that you create within yourself. And by connecting to God within your temple, inside yourself, and then you become the the lighthouse. So mm -hmm. Why there are so many bands in in rock music that have taken the name Lighthouse or wrote songs about the lighthouse? Because these these beautiful kids. Um, and by the way, in case people people aren't aware of this, but the term rock and roll is just purely purely out of the Bible, and it, and it's all related. <laughs> Jesus Christ, rock and roll. Uh, Jesus was in the tomb for, for three days and three nights, but the rock had to roll. Uh, the, the, the rock had to roll out of the way so that Jesus could rise up to eternity at the right-hand side of, of the Father. That's rock and roll. And that's, that's the fornix which exists within the third ventricle of our brain. The fornix is like a rock that blocks the very final chamber up and to the right in the third ventricle of our brain. That chamber is known as by everyone, including, in, including, you know, modern medicine, that chamber, which is the uppermost right um, portion of the third ventricle of the brain, which is that centermost innermost part, part of you right here in um, what, where the third eye chakra would be. 
that uppermost room is called the chamber of the bridegroom. This is, this is what marriage is, is all about. And it's why our marriages aren't working because we, we don't first have the alchemical marriage to the father first. You have to put God first. Mm -hmm. and both parties put God first. How is your marriage ever going to fail? It never will. But if you think you can do this on your own with, without God, you're sadly mistaken. And this is where the world exists right now in the year 2020 or 2021 or whatever they want to call it. This is where we exist right now. We live in a reality. We live in a reality where, um, where we all think that we can do it for ourselves. And again, mm -hmm. go back to the book of Matthew and on our Bible show that we're doing right now, we, we're, we're doing uh, a three-hour show once a week. We're going through the book of Matthew uh, right now. And, um, you know, and again, <laughs> 622, 622, Matthew 622, 6 would be June 22nd would be the first day of summer. And, um, and then the passage 622 in Matthew, that's why you have to recognize folks that the geniuses that put, put together the word of God in, in the Bible uh, tied everything together. So, uh, the, you know, when there's passages that are 1111, we just did the book of Matthew 11 yesterday. And in, in um, verse 11, 11, 11 in the book of Matthew, barely. <laughs> Um, it, it's it, all, all tied to the letters and it's all, it's all the symbology of, of 622 if thine eye be still, thy whole body will will fill with light and you know all of chapter um, 6 is the, is the necessity to go within thyself so when thou was pray enter into thy closet and shut thy door and you know closet is is a modern term for cloister and to cloister is to is to close off, shut shut off, or to close, and that's where the the term for the claustrum, which is which is just behind the third ventricle of our brain, at the back crown of of our head, and that's right next to God's mercy seat um, in the back of our skull, is the claustrum. Claustrum means cloister, which means closet. So when when thou was pray, enter into thy cloister, closet, claustrum, and shut the door. And and then do not utter do not utter, do not utter <clears throat> vain words and repetitions as the heathens do for surely they have their rewards. Um, thy father already knows of of what the <laughs> what thou was need uh, beforehand. So the whole point of this is not is not to be trying to burden God with all of your problems. You have no problems. The only problems you have is because you don't have God in your life. If you <laughs> God in your life, then you have no problem. So what does Jesus say at the culmination of the book of Matthew? Again, 622, that's the highest the sun gets in the sky of the entire year. It's the longest day in the year. It's the most light in the sky of, of the entire year, 622, and this amazing passage. And, and then from 625 to 634 in the book of Matthew, what does Jesus say five times? He says a variation of take no thought for your life mm -hmm. is the key to everything. Stop doing this. This is the left hemisphere of your brain. It's 10%. It's the dime. It's the tithing. And this is, this is, you know, going back to, I'm not sure how Henry feels about this, but going back to the ancients and the Gnostics and the Essenes and, and the yes. teaching the security of this this is the, the left hemisphere of your brain is is the ego and that's the dime brain that's facts figures, and logic the right hemisphere of your brain which is magnetic field this is electricity your right hemisphere which is a field magnet magnetic field it's eternal a field a, a magnetic field doesn't turn on and off it's always on and it never it never needs maintenance it never turns off that's why our future will be through nikola tesla and tesla towers and the transmission by these Tesla coils. We are a Tesla coil. Your sacrum is the base of the Tesla coil. Your spine is, is, the, is the connector, the rod, the cane between two worlds. And then your skull is this, is this pulsating device that pulses out magnetism 360 degrees so that you wear the crown. That's, that's the crown with all these rays of God's inner light within you projecting outward, the lighthouse that shows everybody where the rocky shoals are. Stay away from the rocky shoals. Stay free in, in the, the beautiful depths of the water. 
Don't come too close to the shore because the shore represents your left brain. And then that's your ego. And that's thinking for yourself. Jesus said, take no thought for your life. So this is so much of what Colleen and I teach. The basis of everything we do are the teachings of Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus Christ is saying, you have no problems. Why, look, at, look, at the, look at the fowl of the air. They do not, they do not um, plant their seeds in the fall. They do not tend to their crops all through the summer. And in the fall, when they harvest the bounty of their reward, they do not collect seeds and store them, or they do not collect the fruitions of, of this fruit and store them into, into any storage house or storage facility over the winter for next year. They just live in the moment. They just live in an abundance in the moment and they don't worry about a thing. And what does Jesus say in, in 625? So he says, if, if God so loves the fowl that they are, the fowl of the air that they are provided for, and they don't have to worry about planting a crop for, for next year, why do you? Why do you think that God loves the fowl of the air more than you? When you're the pinnacle of God's creation. When you're the, you're, you're, we're the lighthouses for all other creations on this earth. That's why animals gravitate to us. That's why they love us. And that's why they inherently trust us because we're the highest, we're the peak of, of, of all of God's creation. And we act like freaking monsters because that's our left brain. And that's take thought for yourself. Jesus said five times to kill the five physical senses within the physical body. Kill the five physical senses. Stop thinking, tasting, touching, feeling for you, and trust in God. Six and seven, the six and seven senses. Trust in God. And there, you have to go on. There has to be action. The creation is action. It's a verb. Love is a verb. It's not a noun. It's a verb. You have to do it to have it. And so life is action. So to be able to have action in your life, you have to be able to. That God has to enter. So if you don't take thought, don't think for a second that you won't know how to drive your car anymore or where to go to, God does it. He does it all for you. That's what he's asking you to do. He's asking you to lay down the dime brain, to tithe the 10% uh, that McKeeseldick talked about in the Old Testament, to tithe the 10% that is demonic because and, and again this is also what we teach and i'll just quickly end with this remember in the physiology of the human brain there's no access to the right hemisphere of the brain or the third ventricle of the brain there's no access from the left hemisphere the left hemisphere is a, is an island unto itself phoenicians venice an island unto themselves with canals the, the brain is filled with canals. That's what, that's what these ventricles are. They're the canals and they exist on this, this island within the brain. That's how, they, that's how they view Venice. The Venice is the left brain. They exist solely. So their bloodline traces all the way back to Cain. They're the Canaanites and we are the children of Abel. Abel didn't have any children because he was killed by Cain, but we're the of Abel, which is to be able, willing and able to serve God. And so what Henry said, just to finish my little tirade here, to finish what, uh, and to support what Henry said, uh, Colleen and I will do anything we can that is peaceful and righteous to stand up against this tyranny and to support God and God alone in all of this. For he, the creator, and his son, Jesus Christ, is the light and the way of this world. You follow his way. You don't say that you're Christ-like because you go to church on a Sunday, but you don't do anything that Jesus did. No, it's to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. And you'll never have a problem. You'll never have another problem. Colleen and I don't have problems. We just have service to God's creation. And there are no problems in service to God's creation. I can attest to this. I wouldn't tell you something that I didn't do for myself or I'm not doing for myself. So that's what we cast our nets to the right 100%. We are all in with God, 100%. We're all in with Jesus Christ. We are all in. And gunshots at our door, nothing will stop us because we wear the armor of God. We wear the armor of God when you walk hand in hand with thy father. And that's how it works, my friends. Yeah, beautiful, Charlie. Woo, beautiful, just beautiful. 
Um, yeah, so many important things that you said there. And I love the passion that you have. Charlie, you're a little frozen right now. Hopefully you'll pop back. Passion that you exude and you too, Pastor uh, Hildebrand, is just, um, you know, you can feel that energy and vibration within both of you. It's so beautiful. Um, I'm going to take this maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit a uh, different direction um, and ask you, Pastor Hildebrand, do you think that we're in the messianic age? If you don't mind, tell me a little bit from your understanding of it or from how you view uh, it. Describe it to me what you're saying. The return of the Messiah. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm saying... I'm strictly looking at it now from the point of the Bible, right? I'm, I'm saying that as we near the end, obviously, you know that uh, I, I teach and believe that the Bible teaches that this life is not all. After this life uh, comes the next, right? So uh, I believe that we are nearing the end. Of course, I don't, I'm not predicting any date whatsoever, whatever, none, none of that. But I'm saying when I look at the Bible, when I look at prophecy, uh, it's obvious that it's telling us that the Lord is returning and that his return is, is coming nearer. And we read in the Bible what to look for. For example, when it says, look for the signs of his return. What are the signs of his return? So when I look what is happening around us, uh, it's not hard to understand that the Lord is preparing to return. And some things have to happen before he returns and some of those things aren't pleasant. What we're going through right now is not pleasant. We don't, we don't like to go through this. We would, think, we would like for things to be, quote, normal the way, we, the way we had it. We would all like that. But some things are not, are not pleasant before he returns. But that's why it's even more important for us to stand and be ready and uh, to, to, be, to be, what's the word, just to be, uh, 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 spiritually speaking, dressed and be ready for his return when he comes, because he is coming. He is returning. That's what the Bible tells us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so any information or any thoughts on the third um, reconstruction or building of Solomon's temple and how that has to do with this return, or does it have to do with this return? I would, I would absolutely not uh, discredit anyone if they uh, explain it in a different way or had a different view of it. I'll just, I'll just share, since you're asking me, I'll just mm -hmm. share what I believe, and not just me, but uh, pastors that I've studied with and that we have looked at the Bible. We, we do not believe that there is a literal rebuilding of the temple going to be happening before his return, but there is the spiritual part of it. There's the spiritual part of it. He is preparing his people. And the Bible says, ye are the temple of God. So he is preparing his bride for his return. He is preparing his people for their return. And right now, what is happening, uh, as uncomfortable as this situation is that we're in worldwide, but right now, what is happening is uh, Christianity is being uh, woken up. Like people, people cannot continue on sleeping like they have. Uh, uh, Revelation tells us he will spew out the lukewarm. So right now is the time to wake up. Either you are cold or you are hot. You can't just have this mediocre halfway uh, Christianity that means nothing to anybody and nobody wants that. It's it's boring stuff. Nobody, our young people don't want to come to church service and it's, it's boring. They want to see the fire burning. They want to see the fervor. They want to see the passion that is there. And that's by the grace of God what I stand for. Uh, that the young people have an example to follow, a leader to follow, that I have a passion for this. If not, then let me close the Bible and let me go get a job or something that I can passionately do. But don't be a boring preacher. Don't be a halfway something, you know, lukewarm thing. What It has no value. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't, right? And you, you're either in the front lines or you're not. There is, That's right. there is no in between for sure. And I love what you're saying. It's a, it's a spiritual building. It's the, it, it's the return of Jesus Christ is the return of the consciousness of Jesus Christ, the spirit of Jesus Christ, not necessarily a building, although you can take it literally that way. Sure. Um, absolutely. And, and what about your thoughts on that, Charlie? 
Oh, it, it, it was just joy, joy to listen uh, to what Henry was saying. It, it's exactly right. And don't discount that, <clears throat> that it can't happen in the physical as well. God is, God is creation. God is capable of anything. But I, I think would be that that would be something that we would do out of the passion that Henry is talking about. God, th this is the thing that, again, the Colleen and I try and teach so much. What do you want out of, out of your life? You have life and you're, you're connected to this mother earth and she is utter perfection. She is, she is of the father. So she's utter perfection. You, you have the teacher of teachers in, in Jesus Christ who came before us to show us the way there's, I, I know, uh, you know I've used a lot in, you know, very famous rock star, Peter Frampton, Beautiful kid, you know, in his 20s, rock star making millions of dollars singing these great songs. And there he is on stage with a beautiful cross, just the simple cross on around, around his neck. And he's singing songs like Baby at Your Way, and Show Me, I Want You to Show Me the Way. It's, it's inviting Jesus Christ into his every single moment. What more do you need? What more do you need? You, you don't. God has given us everything that we need. And for any pastor, for, for any pastor, for any parent, you have everything you could ever possibly hope to imagine within the pages of the Bible. It's all there. It's all magical. It's all beautiful. There's nothing evil in it. There's nothing bad in it. It's all, it's all good. You just need to know how to read, especially the Old Testament in terms of, of you know, a lot of the, the murder and stuff. It, it, it's, it's tying into what Jesus was saying in the New Testament, which is take mm -hmm. no thought for your life. So, so this, this, the, you know, the killing of the firstborn of so many houses, this thought is when we take thought for ourselves, that comes from that left island's electrical circuit mm -hmm. of the brain. And, and that is no connection to the right hemisphere of the brain. That's God. Left hemisphere mm -hmm. of the brain is godless. No, that's not being mean or any, that's just the truth. Mm -hmm. The left hemisphere of the brain has no connection to the third ventricle or the right hemisphere of the brain. It's godless. And, and that's what are that's what the government of canada is it's godless that's what the mm -hmm. queen mm -hmm. was she she was godless there mm -hmm. this is the whole problem this is the thing there are no problems there are no problems because god exists god is real god has always existed he's the only thing that truly really 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 is real is god and he's he's the king of all he surveys and we can be the child that is the king of all we survey if we become christ-like so there are no problems in the world. Connect to God. Connect to God. There are no problems in this world. There are not. The, all the problems in this world, as John F. Kennedy said in, in one of his famous speeches, he, he said, every single problem in this world is man-made. And therefore, mm -hmm. there is a solution that man could follow to back away, to back out of all of the problems that they've created. But he said the simplest way to do that would, would, be, would be, again, to... to um, becoming you know a nation a, a nation unto god and and that is the quickest simplest way for everything and so like henry said let there be signs for revelations in terms of what's coming clearly we're we're at that clearly we're at that point and yeah. and what are the signs well how about december 21st when when jupiter which the ancients always always associated with with god the son of creation the creator of light the sun Jupiter, um, and, and its conjunction with Saturn. And here in Mexico, we just saw it breathtakingly, breathtakingly in the southern sky, uh, almost upon the level uh, every night for, for about a month. And you could see Jupiter and Saturn coming closer and closer and closer and closer together. And on December 21st, they were indistinguishable. The star of Bethlehem, where this incredible light was coming out of the, the, the first... Um, the first starlight out of the uh, the night sky was breathtaking. Wow. So, be a sign. Let there let the stars be for signs. Was that not a sign that the Father Jupiter and the Son Saturn are are connected to one another? And that isn't this foreshadowing. Like what's coming? What what will be this this grandiose this great resurrection of 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 us fallen beings back to becoming becoming mankind the children of god well that would be through the son jesus christ because that's the conjunction between jupiter and saturn between the father and the sun in the sky you can't mistake this they're, they're basically even the astronomers were saying that 
they could not they could not calculate a time when Saturn and Jupiter were closer and in more perfect alignment to one another than on this December twenty first. So, what is December? It, it's the it's the fall of man right so again if we look at the fourfold nature that's what the cross is the fourfold nature above is is the skull here is capernaum and there's the you know the top of of the sea of galilee and these are our shoulders upon the cross this is our torso down to the dead sea that you know so we are the holy land right we are the holy land our our body from torso to the crown is um is the holy land and so right. the, seasons, the seasons are all tied into this. It's all because it's all teaching tools. It's all teaching you the, the position of the moon and the sun and, and the relation to what they do with one. It's incredible, but it's all. So in December 21st, it's the, the, the fullest descent of man, the fall, the fall of man. And, and then in the tomb for three days and three nights, we must, <clears throat> we must heal ourselves. We must rest ourselves. We must resurrect ourselves see the world that we live in is the de world de they use de dehumanize um you know d this d that de is their world and it's death de is death the bible is an re world the bible teaches re which is resurrection which is realignment which is reaffirmation which is which is uh, eternal life with God. The, the Bible is an RE book. So when we come out, where are we on December 21st? Perfect alignment between uh, the Father and the Son uh, on December 21st, which is the, the deepest fall of man. Where are we going now? What? How, how do I know? I teach that somewhere along in the next few weeks, something incredible is going to happen because it has to, because this is the ultimate, this is the ultimate resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This so I realized that sorry Charlie I just realized that Pastor Hildebrand has about a minute before he has to go. So uh final words final words maybe Pastor Hildebrand and Charlie I'll let you say final words or if you want to finish that after for sure because I don't want to but I also want to respect your time Pastor Hildebrand so whatever you'd like to say in closing. I would I would just like to say uh something that Charlie pointed out earlier is what stands out to me is that during this whole year of this so-called pandemic, um, you hear basically nothing mentioned of God. They're doing it on their own. They're, they're, or they're trying to do it on their own. And that's why they're making such a huge mess of it. And another important point to me is you watch, you, you are looking at those poorer countries. Like you look, uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I'm actually, I was born in Mexico. So I, I, listen, I speak Spanish. I listen to the president. And he doesn't hesitate at all to bring in God and say about the liberty and so forth. I'm saying those poorer countries right now, in my opinion, are way better off than these richer countries because these richer countries think that they can do it on their own. They can do it without God. Whereas the poorer countries, they look at it and they say, we need the creator. We need God. We are done without God. And that I appreciate so much that they are looking at at a, a totally different way. And I know that we cannot do it on our own in Canada. We must have God. And if we don't realize it, then we'll come into the situation until we realize it. I'm saying we generally speaking for the country, but we must recognize we need God. We can't do it on our own. And again, very nice meeting you, Charlie. Wonderful, Pastor Henry. Thank you so much. And I agree uh, 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Hill. God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Leave if you need to. Okay, thank you very much, Pastor Hildebrand. God bless. Thank you. So, Charlie, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I did, uh -oh. I did know that we had a time limit. So, if you want to finish that, please feel free to do that. You can say final words, and we'll wrap up. It, it's just, it's just that, it's just that if we had the 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 most prolific conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn, Father and Son, on December twenty first. Nobody can deny that. Every we did a twelve hour show um, that had you know hundreds of thousands of people watching um, the show. So so no one can deny what occurred on December twenty first. What what people are not connecting to, and that's why we haven't. I haven't done a single show about the Q team or President Trump anything past January 6th, because there's nothing left to say. We're in, we are in Lent. This is the 40 days, that this is the 40 days and nights and nights of temptation that Jesus himself had, had to go through in preparation for what? Not Easter, 
Easter is, is their, you know, uh, bastardizing of the teachings of Christ in the Bible. It, it's like uh, calling Passover Easter is the equivalent of showing up to, to a party at the Kennedy, Kennedy household in Hyannisport wearing a Lee Harvey Oswald costume. You know, uh, no, that, that opposition. Was, that's right. That that's direct opposition to to what the truth is. So, yeah. isn't Easter the worship of Ishtar, the pagan goddess right. Ishtar? Yeah. Sorry, that's right. And that was all about sacrificing children. It was yes. literally about about these false priests raping young women on the stage a year earlier, and then having mm -hmm. the, the twelve months in preparation to um, just gestate the child. And then to prepare the child three months for then bloodletting the following year. So th this is it. And this is why it's all about the celebration of fertility, because yeah. their life comes from drinking the blood of our innocent. So mm -hmm. I, please, there's no way you're, you're, you can't avoid this. It's coming. No. The reality is that the people who exist, who are the Canaanites, who exist out of the left hemisphere of the brain, that mm -hmm. are the time brain. Okay, these people are godless, so much so that to, to have life without God, they have to drink of God's most pure essence, which would then be the blood of our children. So, kid you not, we literally, for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, have been living under the rule of those people who are vampires. They literally, literally harvest our children as the number one crop cash crop in in existence and they harvest their blood and why children because they're pure we are filled with with uh pollution with poisons because that's what they do to us they poison our mind they poison our body they don't want they'll they'll happily kill us but they won't eat us or drink our blood this is this is the sickness this is the sickness that you're dealing with and it sounds too much but the reason that it is too much is because these people are godless. And so the only solution moving forward, only way, the only way is for us to go back to what we were and what we truly are, which is mankind. And if we become kind to one another, then we're becoming Christed. We're beginning to do this process of putting oil in the lamp. Like you said, uh, Henry said, I was going to speak to it. We just ran out of time. And then you brought it up as well. Where's the lack of passion? You and then you said, it's, it's like nobody has a fire within them for this passion for God anymore. Because yes. they don't have oil in the lamp. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, burning, burning. You have to do the work. You have to do the work to have oil in your lamp. Jesus is a consciousness, is a Christ consciousness within us, which is that chrism oil that rises within us. That's that oil in the lamp. And how do you produce oil, the chrism oil? How do you produce copious amounts of melatonin in your pineal gland and chrism oil, which is the Christed, which is the Christed essence of us within us, by being kind to other people? You have to do the work. And doing the work is to live these teachings of Jesus Christ. So this is what I'm saying. The Bible never is, it never will become a boring book. You can never read it enough times. You'll never read it and go, I'm really getting bored of this. And, and I, <laughs> it's always the most pertinent book ever because it's about us. It's about human physiology. It's about the one journey. It's what we have to do. And so what we have to do is to raise Christ within us back home to the Father. Father in the mercy seat, right here. Third ventricle of the brain is supposed to become the 13th cranial nerve. And again, think about this. Number 13 is Jesus Christ. How do you know this? Because the one is always followed by the 12. No matter inside of us or in the sky or in the pages of the Bible, the one was always followed by the 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. Think of all the numbers that exist in our history. Which number does, does the cabal, which number do governments like Canada target as, as a dangerous, evil, bad luck, and we got to just stay away from this number? What's that number? 13. 13. <laughs> 13. 
13. 13. So the only way, Al, I'll leave it with this. The only solution, the only way out of this is through God. And then to get to God, the only way to God is through the Son. I'm sorry, but it is the way. And what was Jesus? He was the best man. <laughs> literally because he led the mother to that which is the bride to the chamber of the bridegroom to marry the father and he led her up the aisle which is your spine up the aisle and and they he was the jehovah's witness he was jehovah's witness mm -hmm. the alchemical marriage between the mother and the father in the chamber of the bridegroom that's who jesus christ was and is he's the best man and if jesus christ is the best man then we need to read those pages of the new testament for ourselves and we need to live those teachings those actions which put a walking on water walking on water what's the water the maritime admiralty law system where you are a birthing certificate and not a real person you must transcend their bullcrap laws by walking on the water. Everything that Jesus taught you was the way and is to be sovereign. You are a sovereign child of God. And the only connection that the only temple that really exists is Solomon's temple, which is which is within you, which is right here. And that is the connection that you make to, to God. Just read the book of Matthew, chapter six, from beginning to end. It tells you everything. If there's if there's one single thing. That is more important than anything else. It would be the book of Matthew, chapter 6, from verse 1 to verse 34. And that's life. Follow that and you will never get it wrong. Lovely, Charlie. That was beautiful. Well, well said. I mean, I just, I just love, I get lost in what you're saying because so many words, of, so many nuggets of wisdom come out all at once in a short period of time. And you really have to focus on and think about afterwards some of the things that you say because you really are uh, very, very right on. And I love the, all these connections you have made to, you know, the physiology and phrases that we use that we just use and we never think about what they mean. Um, and you just bring it all home in such a nice, nice package. And it's just been a pleasure speaking with you again today. And with Pastor Hildebrandt as well. This has been just tremendous learning and just a great, a fantastic show. I'm so happy that we could do this. It so is. It's, it's worthwhile. It's very, very worthwhile. And to quickly answer your question, yes, this, this is. Are we in the messianic age? Of course we are. It's yeah. just this time through, it will be within you. Because last time through, without, it, it, it led to all of this. The answers lie within you. The answers lie with the messianic age is upon us. This March 21st, March 22nd, March 23rd, these three days of the Passover are going to be unlike anything anyone has ever experienced before. Because if people felt the strength of the great conjunction on December 21st with the alignment of, of Jupiter and Saturn in the sky, the Father and the Son, you wait for, for this Passover because this is the this is the pinnacle of Christ consciousness rising within us. And we are there will be an epiphany. People will absolutely begin to tangibly feel. And that's why, like Henry said, there are some things that need to happen in advance of this. There are. So mm -hmm. stay on your toes because in the next three weeks, so so much has has to be revealed. And remember. For all of you that are a little bit worried about, like, how do we wake the many? How do we wake the many? What if, what if a lot of these famous people that were murdered or killed or sacrificed at a young age didn't die? What if they were saved? What if they have been kept safe all these years? And what if they have a story to tell? Would you listen to Elvis Presley if he told you a story about how demonic the system is? Would you listen to John Lennon or George Harrison if they told you how sick and demonic the music industry is and what the ultimate purpose of the Beatles was meant to be? Would, would you listen to Michael Jackson or Prince if they came forward and told you the same things? Don't worry about these red pills. The red pills will, will, will work and they will come through 
these people who have been John Galted, these, these um, goodly souls that were being sucked dry by this demonic system. And then this demonic system had a plan to, to ritually sacrifice them. And at the last second, they were pulled out. So don't you worry, because, because when these people that we have all looked up to forward and tell you how sick and twisted the system is, the many will listen and the many will begin to awaken. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been great. It's been amazing as usual. And just love this. Love this. Thank you. God bless. You too. Love you so much, Elle. Love you so much, Charlie, Colleen.